What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at account storage in Azure. Now, account storage is super important within Azure. This is where a lot of companies are gonna store a lot of their data. Using account storage in Azure is a super flexible way to store your data. It can store just about anything, and you can even upgrade it into a data lake. And so we'll be taking a look at all these things in this lesson, just to get you familiar with how to use account storage, because you absolutely will be using that within Azure. Without further ado, let's jump on my screen and take a look. So let's start by taking a look at our resources right here in storage. We have our storage accounts. Now, as you can see, there's lots of different options for storage, but by far the one that you're probably going to use the most is storage accounts. Now, we do have right over here, you'll notice Data Lake Storage Gen 1. If we click into this, and let's say we wanted to create a data lake, it says right up here, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 1 will be retired on February 29th of 2024. We recommend that you migrate your Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 1 to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, and that is located in the storage account. So let's come back here. We're gonna go right into storage accounts, and let's really quickly set up a storage account. Now, this is some helpful information if you've never used a storage account before. It says you can store about 500 terabytes. It has general purpose storage use for object stores, NoSQL data store. Uh, you can define and use queries for message processing, and you can also set up file shares. At the very end, we have blob storage accounts for hot and cool access tiers. These are all things that we'll look at uh, in this lesson. And so that is just kind of a preview of a lot of the things that we're going to be looking at. So let's go ahead and create our storage account. Now, this is a brand new account uh, as we set it up in the last lesson. So I'm going to be walking through this with you as if I have a brand new account. Now, you have to have your subscription, which if you're using the free tier, you'll have a free Azure subscription. But we have to have a resource group. Now, we haven't created a resource group. Let's go ahead and create a new one. And we'll just call this one Alex the Analyst. And we'll click OK. Next, we need to specify a storage account name. We'll call this one Alex the Analyst storage. I'm guessing that's unique. Uh, the storage account name has to be unique across all of Azure. So if you type in something kind of generic, usually it will already have been taken. So you have to do something pretty specific. Now this part and the next part, uh, these are pretty important. This region says choose the Azure region that's right for you and your customers. Not all storage account configurations are available in all regions. Now, if you're just setting this up for yourself, just to store some data on the cloud, or you have a little app that you're creating or something like that, it's very easy. You're just gonna select your local region. And for me, that's US East. But what if you have a company or a product or an app that's being used by people all around the world? For example, you have a client facing app that they're using and they're going in and they're uh, retrieving data from some type of storage account. Or maybe they're running a query on your website of data that's stored in a storage account. And what's happening is, is it's stored locally to you, but they're way over here in, uh, let's say they're in central India. And so in order to get from central India to the US, it's going to take a lot longer to retrieve that data. And so it could take 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds for it to get to them in India versus if it's just locally in US East. And so you need to know where your customers or where your clients are located who are going to be using this. Now, just for this lesson, we're going to keep it in East US because that's where I am located. Uh, but that is something you really need to consider, especially as you get more advanced uh, with using Azure. But, you know, just for the basics, you know, you don't really need to be thinking about that. I just want to walk you through my thought process as we're going through this. Next, we have to specify our performance. This is just going to determine how quickly and how easily you can retrieve your data. We're just going to go with standard, but premium would just allow you to retrieve that data even quicker. Next, we have redundancy. Now, redundancy is important, and it's one of the benefits of the cloud, which is if a server goes out that's storing your data, they're going to have a backup of that data somewhere else. And you can specify where that is going to be located. You can either do it uh, a locally redundant storage a geo redundant storage, a zone redundant storage, or a geo zone redundant storage. And so if your data is super important, it is critical to what your website does. It is critical to your clients. If it was deleted by accident in any way or destroyed in any way, your whole company would collapse. You're going to choose this one down here. But if it's just some local files that you're uploading for someone to pick up uh, and it's not that important, you're going to do something like locally redundant storage. And so that will, that's what we'll choose. Uh, just something to consider, though. Now, there are other things you can do in advanced 
networking, data protection, encryption, tags, and all these different things. But if I'm being honest, 99% of the time, you're never going to use any of these unless you really, really, really know what you're doing or that's your job. You're some type of database administrator creating these storage accounts for people on your team. Most likely you're never doing that. So let's go down here. We're going to click create and it's going to say we have our deployment in progress. So it's going to start creating the resources needed for that storage account. And then we're going to actually get into the storage account and start using it. And just like that, it took about 10 seconds. It says that your deployment is complete. We don't need to go to the resource up here. We're going to go to the resource right here. Now, what we're looking at is the user interface for this specific storage account. So we have Alex, the analyst storage. If we go back to all services, we come into storage accounts. You can now see that we have one. We don't have to just have that uh, boilerplate text and then create. If we want to create another one, we'll come right up here. But we can come into the storage account and we can look at this overview. So this is just some of the information on the location, the subscription, uh, the subscription ID, the type of performance, the replication or redundancy, and a few other things as well. Now there's a ton of things on this sidebar, on this left-hand side. We have things like activity log, tags, diagnosis, solve problems, access, data migration, events, storage browser, storage mover, and all these different options. It's kind of overwhelming, but I know just from experience that you're not going to use almost any of these. In fact, things like monitoring are typically used, uh, like something like logs, are typically used by IT if there's an issue. Most likely, you're not going to be coming in here and taking a look at all these things or creating uh, different alerts. You may be working with metrics if you're in the IT department, but again, a lot of this stuff you're not going to be working with specifically. Most of the time, we're going to be here in this storage browser, and this is where the data is actually uploaded, stored, and accessed. So if you come in here, let's come up here to a blob container. Let's say we want to create a blob container just to store a bunch of data. Maybe it's for a client or an application or whatever. We just want to be able to store that data in the cloud. And this is kind of the simplest version of being able to use the storage browser or just storage in general. So what we can do is we can add a container. Now we're going to name this container. We'll call this uh, ATA container. There we go. And if we come down here, we do have an advanced tab. You're most likely not going to use it because this is, uh, deals with encryption. And just, and this is completely, you know, as a sidebar above and beyond what you probably need to know. But when you start trying to access data later on in different applications, whether it's a SQL database or you're using it in Power BI or whatever you're using uh, this data for, if you have it encrypted, you're going to have to have a way to unencrypt it within Azure. And so it is an additional level of security, but it makes it a little bit more difficult to access that data later on if it's not super sensitive data. So just something to think about. Let's go ahead and create this. And now we have this ATA container. So we're doing great over here. So we've already created a storage account. We've gone into the storage browser. We've created a container. And these blob containers are amazing. I've used them thousands of times for so many different things. And blob containers are really just used for anything. Anything you need, you can use and you can dump inside of a blob container, whether it's structured, semi-structured, or unstructured data. And so let's see how that actually works. So let's go into this. And we have nothing in here. And we want to upload some data. So let's come up here to upload. I'm going to go and browse for some files. So in here, we have a bunch of different files. We have a SQL text file, a PNG, which is just an image, uh, a Jupyter notebook file, and a CSV. All of these are completely different. None of these are similar almost any way and so what we're going to do is we're going to select all these we're going to open these up and we can upload these but really quickly let's come in here and take a look at some of these advanced options because this part actually is something that you might use now really the most important one in here is this access tier if we hover over it it's this piece that's kind of important it says optimize storage costs by placing your data in the appropriate access tier and you can come over here and look at all the access tiers if you'd like. But let's take a look at what these access tiers look like and what they actually do. We have four options. We have hot, cool, cold, and archive. Now, this refers to how the data is actually going to be stored in the blob storage. If it is hot, that means that you can just retrieve it anytime you want right away within milliseconds. It's just going to be ready to go and it's going to be there for you. But if you go with an option like cool or cold, 
it's not going to be there hot and ready just to be able to pick up and use that data. It's going to be sitting in a data store where if you want to retrieve it, you may have to wait a little bit. And so these options are actually a lot more cost effective because if you're not using that data actively, you can just plop it in there as a data store where you're not using it for any application or any project and you have the data stored securely, but you don't have to pay a ton of money for it. Whereas if you store it in hot, it's going to cost more money to store that. Lastly is archive and archive means you most likely won't ever use it. This is a contract that was signed uh, six years ago. You need it on file, but most likely you're never going to use this. If you do, you're willing to wait five or 10 minutes because it's not going to be an emergency to get that data or that file or whatever it is. And so these are the different tiers that you can use. Now we'll just use hot because that is the default option. But if you have a use case where it's not important that that data is quickly accessible, you don't need it right away, then these other options are gonna be a lot cheaper. So let's come down here. We're gonna go ahead and upload these files. And there we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually upload one more. And this is gonna be for a future lesson when we actually access some of this data. We're gonna browse for files and we're gonna select CSV file two. I just made a copy of this. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and for this, we're going to choose, uh, you can do any of these, honestly, but let's put it in archive just to be have the most dramatic effect. Let's go ahead and upload this. And as you can see here in this access tier, we have hot and furred and furred and furred, and then we have archive. And so later on in a future lesson, when we try to access some of this data, we're going to try to access both of these and you'll see what actually happens when you have data stored in archive or cool or cold. It's quite similar. We'll see how these are retrieved. Now, the next thing that I want to take a look at is right over here under settings. Now, under settings, you'll see this data lake gen two upgrade. Let's go ahead and click on this. It says that you can upgrade to a storage account with Azure Data Lake Gen 2 capabilities. So if you need things like data analytics and big data storage, you should consider upgrading to Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Now we're not diving into data lakes within Azure. I may do that in a future lesson, but this is where you can access to create a data lake. You can upgrade your storage account into a data lake. They used to have a completely separate data lake Gen 1, which is what we just looked at earlier. But now this is all located within the storage account. So you just upgrade from this location. Then you'll have those data lake capabilities. So that's just something that I wanted to mention while we're here. Now the last thing that I actually want to look at within the storage account is actually the IM, which is the access control. Now within here, you're going to have complete access to this because if you come over here and view your access, you can see that you're going to have grants full access to manage everything and if you come over here, you can read it more. You, you have access to everything because you created it. But what if we want other people to have access to this? Because right now, this is a private account. Nobody else can access this. If you want other people to have access to this, you're just going to go to add. You can add a role assignment or a co-administrator. Let's just say we're going to add a role assignment. You can say this person has the ability to read, but you can't make any changes. So I'm going to click on this one. Then I'm going to come up here to members. Now, right now, I am the only person in my Azure account. So if I wanted to add somebody, let's say Bob, if I wanted to add Bob, he'd have to be uh, have an Azure account. But I would click on Bob and I'd say, OK, I'm going to give Bob this access. I'm going to select him and we're going to give him just the read access. We don't want him to, you know, delete all of our files by accident. He's not the brightest uh, bulb of the bunch. So we're just going to give him that access review and assign. And we'll go ahead and add that role assignment. Now you can see that my access, I am an owner, but I'm also a reader. And so that is how you grant access to storage accounts. You can also create roles, deny assignments, uh, create classic administrators. But typically this is done by a database administrator, but it is something that is extremely, extremely frustrating about Azure just in general, because any single tiny thing you want to do with an Azure, you're going to have to request access. And so when you're first getting started up at a company, they're going to give you a lot of the base access. They're going to, you know, create your accounts. They're going to give you some access to Power BI or the data lake or a SQL database. But whenever you want to use anything outside of that, you have to request IAM access. And so that's just something I want you to be 
aware of because if you want access to specific storage accounts you're saying oh this team you know wants me to work on their data or use something with their data but i don't have access to it that's because you weren't given access to it you just have to request it or go to your database administrator or whoever runs that to ask for permission and so that's kind of the nuts and bolts of what most people are going to use storage accounts for there are things like file shares queues tables honestly I, you don't use them that much and so i'm not going to dive into it these blob containers within storage accounts the data lake which uh, is an upgradable option these are kind of the more important things and so knowing how to store where to store and all these uh, different options is very important and so we'll be coming back to some of this data or putting in new data for different lessons when we actually start accessing data within a storage account so i hope that that was helpful if you have not already i have a full course on azure and aws over on analystbuilder.com i will leave a link in the description if you want to check it out if you like this video be sure to like and subscribe i will see you in the next video